it's coming to you from the noontime show, except this is noontime in Canada, mm. so it's actually the three o'clock show at home. This is Richard Campbell, Hi. who some of you might know from such things as my Monday's podcast that we all started on way back when, or he's the minister at all my weddings. Mm. And this is Caitlin. Say hi, Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> Caitlin is the daughter of Richard, and also, as Mark Miller just discovered, a great person. Oh, you know what I want to talk about? So when you meet people, do you instantly know that you like them? I instantly knew I liked Richard. Yeah, within a minute. Within we, a minute. We, we were like, we were siblings. We tell you. It surprises people sometimes. It happens that quickly, and then we right. both recognize. And it. people say, "How long have you known uh, each other?" We've been friends for a long time. Thirty seconds. Yeah. When it's apparent, it's apparent. That's true. Nothing you can do about it. And that. on the other hand, not that this is the case with Richard Campbell, but when it's repulsive, it's repulsive. Sometimes <laughs> you just don't connect with people, and yeah. you're like, "I'm not even going to try on that level." I still think the majority, it's a time thing. There's no fast way to to know. Certainly, because you can know that you instantly love somebody, but you don't have history with them until you have history. So we at this point have history. We are at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it happened. And yeah, so that's it. That's our quick noontime video because we're on vacation in Vancouver. So, you know. Hello, it's Karen. It's my noontime video in Canada's noontime. We had the party last night for Richard Campbell. It was so crazy fun. It was in an airplane hangar. So we arrived by helicopter and then there was this massive party in this hangar. I'm slightly dragging today because I actually don't drink alcohol that much. And I did yesterday. I'm still kind of feeling it today. So the one thing I would like to say about this party is it was so fun. So whatever, we have a roast for Richard and then dancing. So Miller and I get out and we start dancing. Miller and I were dancing so so hard and we were like all over the place and what I want to say about this is always be the first one to get out on the dance floor because once you do that and once the bigger the fool you make out of yourself the more permission you give absolutely everybody else to go out and make a fool of themselves and everybody has a better time so take one for the team and look like a fool on the dance floor or in a new sport or a new language or whatever it doesn't matter because you screwing up gives people permission to participate and I think it makes the world a better place also hysterically funny Miller and I realized like when we dance we literally take the entire space and cross and and don't care at all how goofy we look and I think there's a benefit to that see you tomorrow at noon so we are traveling again and I guess I was thinking about this on the plane we are not annoyed with each other traveling and we also both are at home all day we both work from home and so why are we not annoyed with each other I don't know figure that out yet I think I do know I think I know one little secret to not being annoyed with your partner even if you spend every single second of every single day with him which is think about what doesn't annoy you about that person every day think about something that doesn't annoy you and it takes you through the rest of it all the other majorly annoying shit all right we'll see you tomorrow at noon hello it's me coming to you at like one something for the noontime video and I meant to do the noontime video at 12 but Mark Miller and I had to kind of have an argument which is really funny because yesterday I was talking about how not to have an argument and then I fucked it up by having an argument and also this is where we argue this is our bathroom um, I don't think it was your fault that you fucked it up I think I brought the argument to you He's right. right. It's entirely Mark Miller's problem. You want to show that this is where I generally sit when I'm having an argument? Yeah, this is where we sit. I sit here, not actually on the toilet, but I sit on the toilet and he sits in the bathtub and we have long discussions about how to solve our lives. Right. I like to give Karen the upper ground, the advantage in it, because, you know. I like that too. And also, right. if we're in the bathroom, the chances of kids walking in us are slightly less. So basically, I would, I would say, I would sum it up by saying, like, it's easy to have an argument if you perceive being rejected or dismissed or unimportant. So if you want out of an argument, I think that the best way, the quickest way out of an argument is to make the other person feel important and listen to. We kind of fucked that up for the last hour. All right, so that's it for today. So we're at Pennywise, which is in Mystic, which is one of our favorite consignment stores because it's really quality stuff. It's very well organized and we're big fans. But also we shop consignment because it's less pollution on the planet. It's less direct association with having children sew your clothes and all of the kind of negativity that goes with fast fashion. So big fan of consignment, big fan of Pennywise. Talk to you tomorrow. Hello, it's Karen Manjikati and it is time for the noontime video. We are coming to you pretty exhausted and sweaty from almost the end of the trail. We've been hiking because we're trying to get rid of our summer sloth. We're trying to get out and get moving. Also, something kind of fun. So I frequently come to Bluff Point and I bring my dog. So this is Tesla and she's a rescue dog. When I first came to Bluff Point one day, she was freaking out, like totally freaking 
freaking out and I didn't know why and then I realized it was because people were here with metal detectors and she was super scared of anyone with a stick so if you had a broom or a mop or a vacuum she would get really scared because she had some certain triggers like abuse triggers from her past the good news is is that my rescue dog today was walking here and there was a man with a stick and she didn't even freak out so she seems to be having less traumatic associations which is awesome rescue a dog take a walk with your family and we'll see you tomorrow at noon we are running around like crazy people trying to get ready for the showing of our house because we are showing our house while we're still in it and we have four teenagers and two little kids at home. It's incredibly impossible to show a house with four teenagers and two small children and try to keep it neat. So last week I went to Canada for Richard Campbell's birthday and sometimes I kind of am like, oh my God, like being staying at home and raising kids and keeping house feels like you're not doing anything all day. But when I go away and I come home, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing shit. The house just falls apart in all kinds of ways that you can't even know or predict. And I'm like, wow, when I'm here, I guess it actually does stay all together. I think you don't get perspective on how much you're doing until you stop doing it. Um, which is why I've made plans for this Friday to take an entire day where I'm not accountable to anybody but myself. It's not a bad idea to not be accountable to anybody or yourself. All right, that's it. Um, I'll see you tomorrow for the noontime video and hopefully I won't be late and I won't have another showing because it's a little stressful.